do your gunfights look like this? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn these gunfights into these gunfights. What's going on guys, it's Ryan back in today with another model for two video and today we're going to teach you how to win more gunfights. If you have not already, drop the like and subscribe and enjoy the video. So I have five main topics that I want to go over today. So let's hop right into the first topic. The first topic is improving your aim. So there are two different ways to improve your aim. In this sense, we're going to talk about active aim. Active aim is when you are ADSing the people and you are actually in the act of killing somebody. So the way you can improve this is to do a few different things. So first off, we're going to go with the cheap ones, the free versions. So you can practice bots warming up is a big key to increasing your uh, aiming ability and increasing your uh, the mind muscle connection with the game struggling to get win gunfights make sure you warm up and you practice in a TDM in a bot lobby get 50 kills use a sniper rifle and this is a quick easy way to get yourself warmed up and get into game action right away another free tool that you can use though is to use aim labs and aim labs is a great tool this is only available on PC I believe uh, you could make sure that your uh, sensitivity is matching the same thing as it is in game or else it might not help you as much as it could um, you still get some use out of it just from the uh, the mind muscle connection but you do want to train your body to you want to train your hands to know exactly how far to move for a certain uh, target and stuff like that so aim labs is really good also aim assist is one of the biggest components make make sure that you are moving your left stick at all times this is called strafing we will get into strafing later on in this video but just know that when you're moving the left left stick with your controller that you're actually gonna be a more aim assist than if you are just standing still or not moving it so make sure you're moving the left stick while ADSing or aiming in general. Mouse settings, you wanna make sure that you uh, find a good sensitivity, and then you also wanna make sure that you go into your mouse settings in Windows, and you wanna click on, uh, I usually just, I would search mouse, type in additional mouse options, and you go into here, and then you want to click on pointer options, and you want to turn off enhanced pointer precision. This basically means that the fa more faster you move your mouse, the faster the uh, mouse will react so it will be throwing off so it's not a one-to-one -one ratio for when your mouse moves and stuff like that that when your mouse moves that will change the your entire game when i built a new pc i forgot to do that for the first night and let me tell you what when i came back i just felt like everything was different and then i uh, changed it and that just got me right back to where i was ways you can win more gunfights by uh pay to win kind of is buying a scuff controller you get the paddles on the back and you get a better laid out controller and doing this will allow you to allow, doing this will allow you to hit more buttons at the same time and it will give you a uh, better movement and it'll give you better ads speed you can get control freaks in your controller there's so many different small things you can do to actually help yourselves out uh, but like always did this thing is paid you should have this you're trying to be a competitive gamer You really should have a scuff controller So this should be something that you already have probably if you're watching this video if not this is a good investment I know it's like two hundred twenty dollars range, but this investment will make a big difference no matter what game you're playing And also you can get a different mouse. I have a uh, I actually have two mice. I have a glorious mouse. I can't pull it up. Oh my god. I have the glorious mice. Here's uh, my wired one. I can't pull up any farther, but this is the uh, glorious one. This one is like the super uh, light one. The glorious. It's all worn out. This is my uh, streaming PC one. And then this is my brand new one that I got. It's a wireless mouse. It's really good actually. Uh, Gonna power on like that and it, you know it kind of lights up and stuff it's a little heavier than that one which i think i do enjoy uh the one thing to watch with your mouse guys is to make sure that these uh these little uh the gliders that they're new so when i bought this mouse first that one i've had for three years i could just tell the difference instantly based on that right there and make sure you guys have a a mouse pad uh glorious does sell a nice mouse pad that is just like a square and it's not like a that weird feeling stuff it's just like a hard platform that you can slide on and their little uh, glider things work really well on it so i always try to make sure that i uh i clean these off i have cats so the cats definitely uh start to uh you get a little fur on there and stuff and you always want to make sure your area is clean so i wipe that off and then i make sure that i just like i lick my uh lick my finger real quick and i just make sure these are clean that's the health healthiest thing you probably should clean that a different way don't do what i did but uh that's what i do okay improving passive aim and this is my second point in this video isn't passive aim passive aim is when you're running around the map and you are um if you're just aimlessly running around the map and you don't know where you're aiming that's not very good crosshair placement is the uh is the keystone here so you want to be 
You want to make sure that your crosshair is about chest level. So you don't want to be aiming at the head. Um, different different games to different or uh, different ways you want to do this. Aiming at the head in Call of Duty is probably not the best thing because you're being in a gunfight and hitting headshots is good, but. You're not going to be as consistently hitting headshots as you are chest shots. Chest is the biggest area on the body, so this is the spot you should be aiming for. And the head's right there, so a little recoil. And you go right up to the head. So it's a, it's a very easy thing to do. However, um, you want to make sure that you are always centered on the target that you want. So if, you're, if you, you think somebody's coming out of a window, you should be... You should have your uh, reticle on that window. You should be have the middle of your screen on that window. If you don't, you're going to have to snap onto that, which the odds of you snapping onto that when the person comes out of that window are a lot less than you just shooting when the guy comes out of the window. And this is something that you have to slowly work on over time. So this is something that you guys will definitely have to uh, always be thinking of when you're playing the game. And this will actually keep you more engaged in the game, which is something that people don't do. And it allows them to become unaware during the game. Uh, keeping the crosshair upper body level, centering uh, the target, making sure your crosshair is never pointing at the ground. So the only time your crosshair should be pointing at the ground is if you are AD at, you are standing up somewhere and you are looking down and you have to kind of choose a height to pick. So that's why whenever you have the high ground, yeah, it's nice, but you also then have to, crosshair placement is harder to do because now you have to choose and figure out what height you're going to be uh, ADSing at. When you're running around the map and everything's flat, you can just keep your crosshair at the same spot and you just move left and right. You should never be moving up and down consistently like that unless you think somebody is going to be jumping off a building or something like that enough rambling about passive aim and a crosshair placement i'm sure most of you guys have heard that before but this is just a uh, reiteration that this is probably crosshair placement probably can help you 50 percent more than you are right now if you are not doing it or you're doing it poorly this is something to work on everybody can work on it it's something that you have to you know be learning the map more and stuff like there's so many different ways you can increase your uh, crosshair placement because you just need to know where people are coming from, learn the spawns, etc. There's some more things in later in this game that later in this video that I will go over that kind of uh, correlate back to this. My third point for this video is becoming more aware in game. You know, learning different things. So awareness is what makes it easy to know where enemies are coming from. Watch the minimap and watch the objectives. See where your teammates are. The enemy is probably not right next to your teammates unless if they are, eh, you know, they might, they're going to be a gunfight and you can probably, you probably know that they're there. So, uh, if your teammates are on one side of the map, your teammates are on C Dom, and your en the enemy is probably spawning in A. If they have A, they're probably spawning in A then, and that allows you to know they're on A and not on C. Now, depending if you have B, etc., where they could be spawning. If you have, if your teammates are all pushed on, up on B, they're probably spawning A. If your teammate is actually pushed back on C, good chance that they're spawning in the other two thirds of the map. Just remember that, and remember that when you die. Look around and see where you spawned at when you die. And then remember where your teammates are and try to remember where the enemy is. And this is how you can learn where you spawn based on where people are in the game. And when you can start to learn the spawns, you can really have your crosshair prediction very good. You guys should always be looking at the mini map. The main map gives you so much information. It gives you the information where your teammates are, where your team is, what objectives are taken, all that stuff. I always, I've been trying to peep the map a little bit more when I'm playing, especially when the UAV is up. Because when a UAV is up, you're going to see a lot of people on the mini map. It doesn't show everybody, but it's going to show a good chunk of the people. So you know where the enemy is spawning. You also will know where your teammates are. So that's a very good way to also learn the spawns. Gathering information is probably the uh, last thing under becoming aware that we can go over. Uh, snaking people going up and down up and down on like a head glitch you can uh, you can collect a lot of information from doing this you can uh, collect information from a flashbang audio audio if you guys don't have a headset make sure you have a headset turn that thing up to where you can at least hear some footsteps flashbang snapshot grenades these are all ways you can get more information in the game you can run the portable radar and you can run DDoS to know somebody's in your area the fourth point that I have today is about positioning a movement and, and peaking and uh, different shots you can do. Uh, first off, there's a jump shot and a drop shot. You should be using both of these consistently. Jump shotting this game around corners is probably the best way to get kills consistently. As long as you know where the people, the person is, you can easily kill them with a jump shot. A drop shot is kind of good for when an enemy catches you off guard and you can just they might be doing the jump shot on you and you can hit a drop shot to throw them off because they are trying to they know where you are but just remember that in this game you have to be pulling backwards on the joystick so if somebody is uh, you want a drop shot the first action you need to do is pull backwards and then drop shot and then you fall to the ground a lot faster than if you just normally drop shot both do work but the one is way faster than the other and it's hard to do the newer drop shot because it's something that everybody isn't used to really uh, strafing and gunfights making sure that you are moving left and right with your uh, player your movement in the, a gunfight is massive and this will also give you the increased aim assist that I talked about earlier 
this is uh, one of those times in that those two pair together really well. You get, you get aim assist, so you're, the game's going to be moving you back and forth, and then you're just going to be getting all that crazy aim assist, and you're going to be a lot harder to hit. Strafing is really meant for uh, decreasing the amount of shots that the enemy is putting on you, but then you get the in added aim assist when you do it. Shoulder peeking, short peeking corners is great, especially when you have the uh, the peak, like you have the right hand peak. It's really easy just to peek uh, a corner real quick, get some information. You don't, you really, you don't even have to peek the entire corner. Just enough to see where an enemy is and come back. If you can do this consistently and fast, it's a really good tool, especially in like search and destroy and different game levels where you have to be a little sneaky and stealthy. Positioning, don't be out in the open guys. Hug cover, and if you can't hug cover, you need to be running smokes. Uh, this is more of a war zone tactic, but don't run out in the middle of the open. Hug the bus, hug the car, stay near something. When you're out in the open, should be a very small percentage of the time when you don't have cover from at least one direction. You should probably always try to have cover from two directions so that you're ADSing one direction and you uh, know that the enemy is probably not coming from this direction because of all the uh, because you're being aware in the game and the mini map in the mini map where your enemies are. All these things correlate to say that my enemy probably should not be coming from this direction, so I'm gonna ADS this way. And my fifth and final point in this game is to learn the maps learning the maps is a crazy way to uh, outsmart your opponents this is done because you can you you know the fastest routes to places you know where the spawns are and you know when they're gonna be flipping based on where your teammates have pushed to um where the enemy is and once you know the the map you can learn the spawn so much easier because you're gonna remember okay i spawned here that enemy's gonna spawn here so now they're spawning here so i'm gonna spawn here and this is the uh, fastest way i think to improve the game is to learn the maps and then to uh, improve your uh, crosshair placement these are two different things and they kind of go together because once you learn the spawns you can make sure that you are continuing to keep your crosshair in the correct spot while you're pushing enemy territory uh this is something that you have to, have to learn though and it's never going to be 100 percent consistent they probably do change stuff like this over and over but once you learn once you uh, start to notice it's changing you can easily uh, correct where the person's at because you already know the map and you know the spawns already so now you just need to correct the uh, change that is happening to the spawn system so hope you guys have all enjoyed this video be sure to drop a like and subscribe and if you did like this video i guarantee you're gonna like this video right here this video right here i'm going over how to get the around Orion camo faster so this camo if you are going for the Orion camo I guarantee you're gonna like this video I go over every little uh, detail that you need to get the Orion camo very fast so hope you guys have all enjoyed the video be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're not already and hope you guys all have a wonderful day thank you guys